Americans have been doing it before we were, and now we've got it. And now who else has it? Does China have it yet? Because you know, every, every time something's developed, everybody else it trickles down to them. That, that's very true. So as people are blaming God for this, it's possible it was man-created. Oh, I've seen in the Bible codes where they can create their own pole shift if they wanted to. And we know they want to. We know they want to because they want to rid the world of at least what they think is, what, 5 billion undesirables because the elite's only 500 million? Well, that's true. Natural disasters bring forth martial law and a new system. Through man-made weapons, a man alone could produce every judgment that we've seen in the book of Revelation. Well, We could do it right now with all the weapons we have. Or we probably, at least some of it. All of it. Every, well, yeah, except for the ones that are... Well, we could even have fire fall from the sky. We could do that. I don't know if they can make an asteroid hit the Earth, though. I think they're practicing. <laughs> I think they're practicing. We have bases on these planets. We've had them for a long time. And they'll send up a rover, you know, and whatever. You know, now this is the biggest joke on the planet. The real space station's out in Australia, Pine Gap. And, and you know, we don't need these little shuttles. Uh, to get to, to Mars and Jupiter. They can do all this through time travel portals, folks. We don't need these little, you know, machines, these challenges. All of that is for public consumption. So they keep, they keep pumping billions of dollars into the space agency. So for somebody listening, Sherry, you're saying the technology that we know of, there's a technology far beyond what we know of, and we just see little glimpses of it on television. Oh, you know what, everybody, and when we do get it, we think it's fiction. You know, we think it's fiction, but they're really telling you technology they've already had. What do you think? You have to have, you know, what exactly is imagination? You know, how can you dream up something you've never seen or experienced? I'm sure it can happen, but you know what? It always comes to happen. If we can dream it, we can achieve it. Well, that's true. Just think, a hundred years ago, somebody thinking about the Internet, television, jet planes, they would think this was. This was fantasy. This was called science fiction today it's a reality so and then of course we know all along the aliens had the internet you know the aliens sit in ufos they have direct access to her and who even created the internet i hope they're listening right now oh i'm sure they are i've got fans all over the world and above the world we could, in. <laughs> we could have our first gray alien talk on the air <laughs> you know i've seen in the bible codes where they do literally sit in ufos and they have internet access well, yeah. they're bored. They're just waiting. I They've guess. created it. Satan is not omniscient or omnipresent. And so he has to count on technology to be able to rule this world and to keep an eye on it and to spy on it. You put up a nuclear reactor or a nuclear or some kind of missile weapons defense facility somewhere, and the first thing you're going to have over there is a UFO staking it out because they want to know what you're doing. They keep tabs on everything. They're called watchers. <laughs> That's what they are. They're, they're fallen watchers. They were normally uh, angels from the Lord God who were supposed to watch over the earth for their protection. And now, since in their fallen state, they're just waiting for the time that they can destroy it. So they're still doing what they knew to do, but for evil, not good. Yes, exactly. Well, speaking of watchers, God has his watchers, too. And as we said in the beginning of the show, Sherry, it does seem like 2005 is going to become a, a very bad year. Yeah, you know, year of judgment all the way just matches, you know, everybody's kind of saying the same thing, so when does, when does it start to ring a little bit of truth to somebody, you know? You know, the, the watchmen are sounding the alarms, folks. That's true. You know, there is one interpretation of Matthew 24 of the fig tree that could mean when, Jer when Israel took Jerusalem, that generation will see the end at the end of everything in 1967 plus 40 years, which is a generation, takes us to the year 2007. Yeah, and there's a lot of people that say that 2007 is the last year as we know it. You know, folks, I don't know one way or the other what year it's going to be, but I can almost guarantee you we'll never see a year past 2012. Well, we, we probably won't because that's when, a lot, I, I believe, Sherry, that's the year when the comet planet will pass this Earth by then. Well, I see a lot of comets alone in 2009 hitting two on the west coast alone, one on the east. And notice all these comets are coming towards me. <laughs> see, look in the codes. I'm not seeing these comets hitting other countries. I'm seeing them being hurled right at America. So probably that isn't the Lord's judgment on this country. Oh, it would be overdue. And that's a conservative estimate stating three in 2009 when we're seeing events already being accelerated. 
Well, that's very true. So if somebody's listening tonight, what would you tell them, Sherry? You know, <laughs> get out of the complacency and get back to the Lord. What well, he's always said, lead my people back to me, lead them back to him. They need to seek the Lord. They need to get back in a relationship with him to where they can hear him, to where they can recognize that if he's speaking to them and guiding them to do something, that they do it. Because it's going to be your thoughts and, and, and your survival instincts that are going to uh, make it through a lot of destructions coming here, folks. He's not going to whisk, whisk you up with a chariot of horses. He's going to tell you. He's going to speak to you. And if you can't hear his voice, you're going to be hurt. That's very true. And people, you need to also get back to reading Jesus' words in the gospel, his simple words in red, and put down Paul for a while. <laughs> you know, because that's all a lot of Christians spend their whole life just reading some verses and letters of Paul. That's like I did for 30 years. All you read is Paul. Paul, 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 Paul. Paul. If Paul doesn't say the same things the Lord says. So Paul's not the Savior of all. Jesus is. You have to put down Paul and start reading Jesus' words. Yeah, read the words in red. Of course, right now, we're the devil, you know, we're speaking through the devil. That's what people are starting to think, you know. Some <laughs> people are so deceived today, Christians, that if you tell them, follow Jesus, read Jesus' words, they say, oh, that's the devil speaking. Why would it be the devil telling yeah. you to follow right. Jesus? Yeah, the devil's going to tell you to follow Jesus. No, the devil's going <laughs> to tell you to follow Paul. The <laughs> devil's going to tell you to follow Benny Hinn. You know what the Lord told me last yeah. year? was that we put these things as idols before him. People put their Bibles as an idol before him, their churches, their favorite apostles or, or, or whatever but before him, because we don't go to him direct. We let these things keep us away from talking to him direct, and they become your idols. And people don't think, well, there's no way in the world a Bible could become an idol. Yes, I can. Sure it can. If you're reading just Paul, you have an idol. You're spending all your time reading and not talking. <laughs> you need to talk. When you, when you build a relationship with somebody, it's based on communication. It's based on talking. That's a very good point, Sherry. The Bible could become an idol if you never spend any time with God in prayer. If you're just reading the book, yep. then it's your idol. Yeah. You, know, you have to do what the book says, and that's pray. Pray. Seek Him. Commune with Him. You know, people think that the tree of life is a literal tree, and they're going to eat off this tree of life, and it's going to be one apple after the next. The tree of life is the Lord, and eating with him is communing with him. You know, it was symbolic of communing with him, of being with him. That's very true, Sherry, and the people out there listening, you pray about what you're hearing tonight, because we are heading into very rough times, and it's your relationship with God that's going to save you from this, not these churches. Yeah. You can't say it enough times, and at least now we have two hours to say it. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but really, I mean, you could, you know, sometimes you may think this is, is wrong or off. No, it's not. It's just we've been brainwashed by the churches for so long that we start to think that God's voice is wrong. That's yeah. what happens, you know, sure. I can't recognize it. You know, one of, the, one of the biggest things I hear that just, you know, sends shrivels up my skin is that's not what my pastor says. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, or my husband doesn't say that. You know, how many women are going to follow their husbands to the pit of hell because they don't have enough brains to think for themselves? I get it all the time in, the, in, the, in those chat rooms back when I used to be in them or just talking to people online in, in news groups. And, and that, oh, my husband doesn't, my husband says this, or my pastor says that. Think for yourself, because no one else is going to stand in your shoes but you. It's usually pastor. Oh, I hear husband quite a bit. Husband. Well, the what? older women, you know, the ones that <laughs> can't think for themselves. <laughs> pastor, husband, that's what Paul would like, you know. Yeah, you know, and there's so much, so much deception going on. And it's because of the conditioning and people, you know, this conditioning was at work before you were even born. You were born right into the conditioning. Speaking and of that, Sherry, sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. I'm just saying you spoke about conditioning. I wrote a quick little poem on my site about this one saved, always saved. <laughs> three stands of, the three stands of poem, but I'd just like to read it right now because you, you just hit on that. It goes like this. Hope I can remember it all. One saved, always saved, from the cradle to the grave. And that's really what it is. See, from the time you're born in these churches, you're, we're brainwashed.